Author's Dream. This is a show where we talk about how authors write their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. Just look for my name, Linda Maria Frank. I am the author of Any Tillery Mysteries. Click on my picture. And um, all of my interviews will come up. Uh, there are over 100 of them, uh, mostly local Long Island talent. So if you're a reader or a writer and you're interested in how books get made and what they're about, you'll find a lot of information on those shows. We are also on Facebook. The name of the Facebook page is The Writer's Dream. If you wish to be on the show, you can message me through that Facebook page. And we are on uh, Optimum TV. We are on uh, Cablevision, Channel 20, at 2.30 on Thursday afternoon. Today's guest is Stephanie Larkin of Red Penguin Publishing. And if you are interested in publishing a book or you're interested in some very interesting books, I strongly suggest you go on her website, redpenguin.com. And Stephanie, tell us about some of the goodies on your website. Sure, absolutely. Uh, first, just a, a little correction. It's redpenguinbooks.com, just okay. to find it. And um, we have lots of good things going on there. Um, if you are a writer, as Linda mentioned, we, we publish full books, but we also publish anthologies, um, literary collections. There's always an open submission somewhere on that website. So if you like to write short stories, poems, or short dramatic works, please head over there because uh, I know there's uh, different writing contests and all sorts of things for writers. For readers, we also have lots and lots of books available, of course, to read and purchase, but we also have a book review club. So those who love to read books, um, we can send you books to review. We have prizes and games and a lovely community of writers and readers. So thanks, Linda. Yeah, and you also have audio books and you also have online courses. We do, thank you. I, there's so much stuff. You're so right. There are audio books yeah. there including your audio book, which I'm so excited to have there. And we have mm -hmm. online courses. So if you would like to learn to write, whether you want to just get started with creative writing or poetry, or even something a little more specialized. For example, if you would like to learn how to write a mystery, there happens to be a fabulous course on our website right now about writing a mystery. And I know Linda's laughing because she is the online instructor of that course. So please do visit. That was fun to do. That was really fun to do. We had a good and, time. And uh, your, your website is like, uh, is like an amazing department store. Um, <laughs> goodies. <laughs> For readers and writers, I love your website. I, I recommend it to everybody. Our topic today is something uh, that I think a lot of us are feeling um, the pain of, and that's marketing in COVID. Marketing in the era of COVID, uh, especially for self-published authors. So I like to talk about um, the impact of COVID. Uh, how do you see it from your point of view? What has been the impact for you? Well, well, certainly there's been a big impact, of course, around the world because of COVID. And some of the things are positive for yeah. independent authors, and some are definitely negatives for independent authors. Um, I would say certainly larger publishing firms have had the biggest problem because they are the least nimble to be able to adjust. So you smaller publishers or authors out there actually do have an advantage because you can make adjustments or changes to what you're doing much quicker than say Random House. Um, so some of the bigger publishing houses are having problems. Of course, uh, bookstores, uh, many were hanging on by a thread before COVID and many of those are you know, so so live bookstores, live book events, book signings, book fairs, most of those things went right out the window. Some of them will be coming back, maybe not all of them. So the landscape has changed drastically. Um, there's also a huge problem going on since COVID and continuing um, with paper. There is a global paper shortage right now uh, mm -hmm. between you know, 40 and 60% down in paper. Um, if you think about how paper is made and all of those places where paper is made, 
They're also affected by COVID. Um, shipping on books, very, very slow. You know, even if you just thought that any piece of one puzzle is just down 5%, and we know things are down more than 5%, but to get a book in your hand, it means the people who are chopping down trees, the people who are creating paper, the people who are binding books, shipping, and et cetera. Even if those things are only down 5%, it means that getting books to you is going to be 50% longer and slower. So lots of lots of problems in the whole distribution area and the publishing area in general. But as I said, those those downsides are actually, if you look at them, because you know me, Linda, I'm very much a glass is half full kind of a girl. Um, yeah. There are many upsides to it. I, I'll just say on a personal note, the biggest upside has been so many people are writing, and I love that. Yes. I love that. Um, the amount of books that are being published is way, way up, and the amount of books that people are reading is way up because of the pandemic. Now, that's a great thing, but I will give you a downside to that. With more books being published, it is harder than ever for your book to be found. Just yes. because. There are so many books out there and all of those methods I mentioned before, like book fairs and sales and things, all of those things are gone. So it's a matter of kind of readjusting how you think about marketing, just like we've all adjusted how we think about the world. And we really have to think about it in an online space, not an offline space. Yes, I, I I I agree with you. I uh, personally have gone through the same thing. Uh, during the first COVID shutdown, I wrote a book, and uh, because I could communicate with everybody online, I was able to get my graphic designer and my uh, illustrator to put the book together, and we put it on Amazon. Right. However, I do not sell on Amazon. I I just it just I'm a self-published author, and I I mean I suppose I do somewhat. The audiobooks do sell, and sometimes and the ebooks. But I sell my books at book fairs. Yeah. That's where I sell my my major. You know, I buy them, and I have uh, a basement full of books, and then I sell them at crafts fairs, church fairs, uh, summer fairs, uh, book fairs in schools. That's my major uh, market. And of course, as you said, it's disappeared. It's coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, I organize the. Uh, book events for Long Island children's writers and illustrators, and we set up book fairs in schools. And we have six events in the spring, which I'm surprised at, but I think it's because the schools have gotten to the point where they're just going to try to uh, soldier through, uh, just like Broadway. You have to be vaccinated to get there and wear a mask and whatnot, and, and that's what we're going to have to do for a while. I think that is the adjustment that um, that we need to uh, face. And um, But I think the downside um, for, and this is a downside in particular for uh, self-published authors, is um, the fact that a self-published author does everything for themselves. Uh, or hires individual people to do things. Whereas if you sign a contract with Random House, there, there's your contract gives you, uh, uh, you know, a, a pot of money. But of course, you have to sell enough books, and otherwise you have to pay back what what you haven't sold. But they also give you advertising, some advertising. Uh, they put you on the distributors' catalogs. All of that becomes automatic. Some of the self-publishing companies like uh, Archway or Ingram Sparks, they do that as well. But you're paying for it. You're not getting uh, you know, money. You're putting money out. So uh, that's the disadvantage of, um, of a self-published author. But again, because of what you just said, um, I am free as a self-published author to move ahead and do my publicity online. Exactly. And I, I certainly don't want you to delude yourself into thinking that if you signed a contract with Random House, that they are going to be spending all sorts of money marketing. No, 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 I know that. <laughs> but That's they do some. <laughs> they do some. <laughs> you 
would say some. Um, for their top 5% of authors, they do some. Quite frankly, they expect you to do the legwork. So whether you are self-published or traditionally published, the expectation is that you are doing the legwork. Now, the question is then, what does that mean to do the legwork? Now, you said yourself that you sell most of your books at in-person events. In -person. Yes, absolutely. You started by saying, I don't sell on Amazon. But I think what you really meant to say is certainly your books are available for sale at Amazon, but you don't oh, make yeah. the bulk of your sales there. It's not that That's you right. don't sell on Amazon. It's that the bulk of your sales are not coming there. And then mm -hmm. the question becomes, well, why not? And one thing that COVID has done for businesses in general is any of those businesses like yourself, that most of your income was coming in from an in-person space. Many businesses have used the past two years to build up their online space. So that way, when the in-person space comes back, it's not like we're going to forget about this. You know, what can we do in order to sell more books on Amazon? In-person is great. We've learned that in-person can go away like that. So uh, what can we do so that we are selling more books on Amazon? And for most people, the biggest problem with Amazon is basically clutter. There are just so many things there that yes. you go to a book fair, you get to put them on a table and look all nice. And Amazon, you have a lot, a lot of competition there, which is why driving sales online through social media, through your mailing list, doing all sorts of things in the online space to get people to buy those books is critical. And people will say, well, you know, I have a Facebook account. I posted once. Okay. I'm talking about posting like, you know, seven times a week on any particular social media if you're on instagram there should be you know several posts a day plus reels plus stories it's a commitment and and like you said linda a lot of people don't want to do that um but i will dare say that whether you're self-published or whether you know um random house picks you up you're expected to do that so yes yes i agree i i and i i have found that to be true also amazon offers you a number of ways of advertising and getting your book out front on Amazon. I have really not taken advantage of that because I have found uh, other ways to do it. Um, my thing is that I hunt through the various websites that, like yours, that advertise books. Of course, you advertise a book that you publish in some way or another, but there are a lot of websites that will advertise books that they have not published. That's there. There's like Global, um, Global Book network no, i have it here let me say it ba, 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 ba. Mm, i can't find it right now but it's uh yeah there it is Go global book marketing network and then there also there's there's websites like the author show you get one free interview do it that's do right it. you're right there's and a any, lot of any place where you can find a free whatever or a very inexpensive whatever. And the other thing that I found that has been very helpful is contests. There are many contests out there that are not horribly expensive. And one in particular um, based in England that I found, um, it's called Wishing Shelf Book Awards. They, when they review your book, if you get an honorable mention, what they give you with that is reviewers. And what this gentleman does is, for instance, with kids' books, he has connections with uh, teachers in schools, and he has the kids, actually, the kids who the book is aimed at, he has them reviewing it. And I find that to be uh, very helpful. If you get good reviews or you uh, get on a website which will give you reviews, um, these are very helpful because then you can put them on Amazon, but you can also use a newsletter. You can post them on social media. And anything that you do with the book should end up somewhere on the internet. <laughs> and uh, I, I have to say that doing Instagram one a day, once a day, I, 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 I find that hard. Not for but, everybody. 
everybody, but that's that's the commitment involved if you are market your books in that space. Um, it's not a matter of posting once, one and done kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I know. That you mentioned book reviews because that's something that every author really, really needs. When people go to Amazon, and you know this, if you were buying a coffee maker on Amazon, you would read or at least look at how many stars various coffee makers got, and that would influence your decision greatly. Same thing goes with a book. So all authors out there desperately need more reviews. And that's something that you're mentioning book contests, but I'll bet a lot of your viewers have not been very, very proactive with the people in their own circle. I'm talking about the people who are buying your book, your friends, your family, fellow authors, doing a book swap with other authors. That's something we do over at Red Penguin Books is we do a lot of book swaps and book reviews because as far as I'm concerned, we are an author community and we should help each other. And there are many ways of getting those and book reviews will help enormously. So if you haven't been very proactive about it with people in your own circle, or like I mentioned, if you, if you have five author friends and you all you know, did a book review swap, that's five more reviews on your book. That's, that's huge. Right. So please yeah. be proactive about that. It's probably easier than posting on Instagram five times a week, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to definitely send um, people, when this goes up on YouTube, I'm going to send people to listen to this because I can't tell you how difficult it is to get authors in a group who belong to an organization to review each other's books. Mm. I, I, it, is, I, it is unbelievably to me, un unbelievable to me. And, and it's, I also, go ahead. One of the single most things that will help your book sales. That's really one of those things that when people see all of those stars and they see how many people reviewed it, that is a huge way to help your book sales online. Yeah, I, I found that myself. But I also... Uh, talking about uh, social media, uh, this is the uh, magazine for independent book publishers, and they have an article in their latest one on using TikTok. Yep. Okay, yep. so TikTok, of all things, and it tells you how to do it and how um, you must do it. <laughs> they always tell you you must do it. <laughs> so um, even TikTok. Yes. Well, my feeling about social media for authors in general, and this goes for any business. I mean, yeah, TikTok is great. Instagram is great. Pick one, which one that you feel comfortable with. If you go to TikTok and you love it and you want to make TikTok videos, good for you. But if that's not your thing, then go wherever you feel comfortable. But you do have to post regularly. And by regularly, I mean at least daily. Because if you think about it, think of it this way. If I go to Facebook right now and I see the things that come up in my feed, and if I go back to Facebook in four hours, I'm going to see totally different things. Okay? Which means that if you, Linda, or anybody else posted on Facebook, if I don't look at it within that, say, four-hour window, I'm not going to see it because there's other stuff. Okay, That's why you have to post regularly. So my, that's why I said everybody will tell you, you have to do this, you have to do that. You know what you have to do? You have to find something you're comfortable with and that mm -hmm. you're willing to do regularly, like daily isn't it kind of like exercise if i tell you that you know sit-ups are the greatest exercise and you hate them you're not gonna do them but if you like walking then that's what you should do if you like dancing that's what you should do so the same thing goes with marketing find something you like and do it to the hilt don't don't listen to all those do everything do one thing really really well and if this week it's book reviews, do book reviews. Well, there's there's also uh, something like Hootsuite, which which if you post on Facebook, 
they also put it on Twitter. They also put it, you know, they, they link it all together. And, and you will see that if you look at your Twitter feed, you'll see if you scroll down, things are repeated and repeated and repeated. And that, that those are the people who are doing what you're saying they should be doing. And, um, and you're right. And that's how social media works. Um, there are a lot of people. I mean, I, I interviewed a, a woman uh, last month and she, she wrote a book about autism, personal story. It's really good. And she said, well, I don't do much about marketing. And I thought to myself, well, I gave her a, a, you know, a bunch of things that she could do, but I thought to myself, if you don't do it, the book is just going to die. It's just going to die on the shelf. And she has a perfect, she has a perfect marketplace for a book about autism, especially, I mean, there's an organization for many organizations for autistic children and parents and whatnot that, uh, you know, she could approach them. And, um, talk about would you please carry my book or offer my book or feature my book or whatever and also uh, another thing that you can do uh, that i have found very helpful is you all everybody on long island and probably everywhere else has a local newspaper and local newspapers are always looking for stories they they don't especially during the pandemic i mean because everybody was hunkered down in their basement you know how much can they talk about that so, um, you know, you can get your story out in a local paper and then you can use it in your newsletter and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of things you can do, but it all, you're right. It, it's a lot of work. Um, and I think, I think you're absolutely right is that um, if, if you were worried about Barnes and Nobles carrying your book during the pandemic, you had a big worry because the store was closed for a while. And I, I'm sure even now, um, traffic in the stores isn't what it used to be. Uh, and also, as you said, the supply chain has um, impacted on people manufacturing books. Whereas my feeling is that the greatest thing you can do is make an audio book. Mm. Because people, real audio books are the way to go. I mean, if you sat on the Long Island, because I, I haven't been on the Long Island Railroad since the pandemic. But when I would be there, people would be either you know doing this with their kindles or their other devices or they would be listening to now what uh, that's one of the areas that sales have dipped a bit because no one's commuting they're all working from home so audiobooks i love audiobooks and like you said linda when everyone's commuting but if you've been on the long island railroad lately it's completely <laughs> I do want to mention one other thing when we were talking about social media is that, and, and this is especially a big plug for Facebook, there are plenty of groups on Facebook, both of readers and writers. Um, these are all free. If you just uh, go to Facebook groups and type in like mystery writers or mm -hmm. authors, you're going to find loads of groups of people who are writers like yourself. And those are people that we can do what we were talking about, exchanging book reviews with. And you'll also learn a lot of things in those groups because you'll hear what other people are doing. But certainly it's a great community for book review swaps. The other thing you will find on Facebook are there are plenty of readers groups. There are groups of people who are looking for, I need a book to read. And it's a great place to free advertise your book. So please don't forget that, that Facebook groups, besides just posting on your own Facebook wall, go and check out those other things because those are some really helpful things for you. Well, one of the things that you offer on your, um, on, on your uh, website is classes, webinars, just where you have authors talking to one another. And one of my favorite things is that if you're an author, it'd be great to find a rabbi, a person who's going to tell you about their expertise and help you along. And sometimes when you join these writers groups, I mean, now it, it's a little chancy in the library and whatnot, but they're, they're online. You have them on your website. Uh, you'll find somebody who's been a little bit ahead of you or has an idea, especially about marketing. Um, Somebody who was in the last group that I visited was uh, doing marketing in Starbucks. Mm. And I thought, I thought, yeah, that's a great place because people like to get a coffee and sit and read in Starbucks. So there you are with your book selling them. 
No, you're so right. We have about a minute left, so um, I'd like to get your final words of wisdom and, and also to tell the audience, please visit redpenguinbooks.com because this is a fabulous website. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I, I would love for people to go there because we do have that community you're talking about. Um, just you know, leave your email address there so we can get you involved with other readers and writers because there's nothing like surrounding yourself with people who, like Linda said, might be just a little step above you and you could mm -hmm. learn from them. But I would say make a decision if you're an author of what you want to do and do something, baby steps even. But do something every day. Do something to market. I agree. Brain. And and this second lockdown, I'm into my second Buccaneers book. So <laughs> writing away. That's um, better. And and I yeah. So I I think this has been very productive. I hope this is helpful to our viewers, and uh, I hope to be seeing you soon, Stephanie, in person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and visit you in, in Rosedale. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. I can't wait. Okay. Take care.